All right, so welcome again. First session of the day, going mobile configuration and security. During this, well, let me go first to these objectives. So this is gonna be a session of 30 minutes, 15 minutes of very quick theory where I'll be talking very fast. And I hope you complain today in feedback saying Jaime spoke very fast today. Sorry about that. The thing is I need to pack a lot of things in this session. And it's more, I think, for you to have this session as a um, reference that you can go through afterwards. In any case, if at one point you don't understand anything, please let me know. I will rephrase it during the exercise session, or I will try to explain it better. But during this session, what I'm going to try to explain, it's basically what are the implications on going mobile. So you have already a DHIS2 implementation and you decide to add Android. And we're gonna try to see from different perspectives. In this first session, we will be talking from the configuration perspective and from the security perspective. At the end, you will have to do a quick exercise proving that you understood why or how to set up some security measures. I think it's very easy, but um, the important thing is that for you to know that when you implement Android, when you add Android to your implementation, there are big things that you need to consider. And during this whole week, we have been talking about how to set up the server, etc. This is a session more a bit about how to project manage, maybe, or if at one point you become consultants for the HIS2, etc. This is a bit less on getting your hands dirty with certain things, but more to understand why or what you should be thinking about when implemented, implementing the HS2 with Android. I have divided this session, as I was saying, in two main parts, basically, and they are kind of being, they will be overlapping. The first thing I'm gonna be talking is that offline data entry, what does it mean? And then security. What I said, uh, don't think that these are silos or isolated contents because they will be overlapping. But it's the way I thought it could be easier for you to kind of understand or have two ways of thinking. <clears throat> so let me go um, here. The first group, offline data and if you know, or if you didn't know, uh, and I will ask you to do it eventually during, your, during the session, you have been using the application the whole week and probably you were having connection. You were having either Wi-Fi or you were having 3G connection. Uh, maybe you didn't realize, but if you could have, I mean, if you could have turned the Wi-Fi or the data out, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me one second. I need to cough very hard. We are destroying you with all these sessions. Sorry, exactly. I'm not ready for so much talking. <laughs> so what I was saying is that one of the main reasons that this application, so Android application was built, is to allow offline data entry. And this means that you can turn the Wi-Fi off or a 3G off, and you will still use the application. So try doing this session, eventually turn it off and see how you can still use the application. And this, makes the application very cool because you can have now people going uh, to collect data to facilities, to schools, wherever, where you might not have connectivity. But because of this, the moment that this, the concept enters, we have many things to consider. And these are some of the points that I have put here that we will be covering quickly. But it's important to know that if you want to work offline, you need to perform some things. That is what we'll explain. So basically, offline data entry. Your devices might not have data connection. And you will see how is my application going to work if I don't have data. This is the key thing. Android application, what it's going to do is going to download all the information that might use. And please note that I'm using the word might. This means that if you set up wrongly your DHS2 server, because you say, okay, this user will be assigned to the whole country. Android, the device, 
will say, okay, I have been assigned with this to the whole country, and I don't know if he will be in the north part of the country, in the south, or where he or she will be. So I'm going to download this information. This has a big impact because it, you have to download many, many things. So first of all, we're putting a lot of information in the device that might use or might not use. But on top of that, you need to have as well, and here we're overlapping the two concepts, from security perspective. Now this device will contain much more data that probably will be needed. And this poses a security problem, okay? So just that's it. The last question, try to limit the scope, the programs and the data sets that the user will be using. Because if you don't do this, a lot of data is downloaded on the phone. And this implies, apart from security, you are misusing or uh, yeah, using wrongly the resources you have. Here, it's something that was briefly covered yesterday. On the right side of the of the screen, you see the refill, and on the left side, you see the well, the amount of the default values. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is that your Android devices they read a configuration from the server, as Milagros was explaining yesterday, and this information tells the Android how much data I need to download. So for one side, we are setting the programs, the data sets, et cetera, but then we need, so that's the metadata, but then we have to put the content inside, that's the data. So by default, just for you to know that Android will be downloading 500 TIs and 1000 events. And on the right side, we see that we will have 100 reserve values. This limits the amount of information I will be able to put in the system. So if, just to make a quick comparison, imagine you are sending someone on the field to collect data and you give this person three sheets of paper and this person is going to be out for one week. Probably with three pages, he or she will not have enough. So you need to make sure you give this person many more papers so they can perform their job. With Android, it's a bit similar. We can tweak these values and we need to do it depending on the setup. I will not go through examples, but just have this in mind that if the person will be offline for more time than other people, maybe we need to adjust these values. Another thing that poses usually problems is when you try to use auto IDs, so auto-generated uh, IDs. And this, it's a bit complex. I'm putting you down here a reference, but because Android, again, is gonna go offline and you don't know when this person will be entering values. When you use generated IDs that have, for example, current date uh, parts might not work as you expect. Very quick example, I'm gonna go here to the last part. And please pay attention because this goes in the exam. Here, look what I'm saying. I'm generating a value. This, for example, imagine you're registering patients uh, that have COVID, and here you are trying to put current, these patients should have a unique code that is the current date, year, month, and day, and sequential from zero to 99. If this sounds a bit weird, don't worry. Basically, what I'm trying to set is like a generated ID that contains this specific pattern. Android is going to connect to the server and it's going to request values. But Android doesn't know if you're going to be entering patients today, tomorrow, in one week, or in one month. So if you realize here, I'm putting years, month, and date. So today is the 3rd of December of 2021. This is from last year, sorry. And it will generate, Android will say, listen, I cannot know if you will be entering values today or tomorrow or in three weeks. So I'm generating everything for today. So it might not work as you expect. If this person goes offline and tries to register values tomorrow, Android will say, I'm sorry, I have run out of values because all the ones are from yesterday and I don't have values for today. I'm putting here a reference that is very well explained. It's just for you to have this in mind when you set up a system that this might not be the ideal way of generating values. And this is something that changed a lot from using web than from using Android. Because in web, we're always working online. People have connectivity. In Android, we, don't, we might not have connectivity. 
And another thing to know is that Android, despite I've told you that you can uh, remove your data connection or your 3G, your data or your Wi-Fi connection, at the moment you can use the application, but of course you cannot synchronize because in order to synchronize, you need to reach the server. Important to know that you can synchronize by SMS. It's not covered here. I'm putting more references here that you can use in case you need, but it is good to know that with your devices, if at one point you're going to places where there will be no Wi-Fi and no connectivity at all, you could still synchronize by SMS. If you're syncing TIs, it might require several SMSs per TI, but it's a possibility and Android application can do it. I know I talk about maybe blur concepts. I hope I managed to transmit you that there are big trick uh, perks into setting for Android or not setting for Android. And now we're gonna talk quickly about security. And unfortunately, I think this session should be much longer, but I don't have the time. Just wanted to mention that when we talk about data security, uh, we talk mainly about these three concepts, which are confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Reviewing them very quickly, confidentiality means that you want to transmit information and you want this information to reach only the person. So I want to send a letter to my mom and I want her to be the only one reading the letter. That's what we call confidentiality. <clears throat> Integrity is that this information needs to be authentic. If I have written a letter and I have put a lock in the envelope, for example, I want that my mother sees the letter, but I want her to read the letter I wrote. So that's what we call integrity. Nobody can uh, mess with the message. And availability is that information needs to be available when, the, when it's needed. So I'm sending a letter to my mother and I want her to let her know that I'm arriving tomorrow. If this letter does not arrive tomorrow, but in three weeks, does it make sense this letter? So that's the three concepts very quickly explained in terms of data security, but we cannot talk about data security without mentioning these concepts. Again, this is something that I'm hoping that you will need in case you become more like an um, implementer of the HSU more than a person setting the system or you become a project manager, just for you to have these concepts in mind. And for this, I have prepared a quiz that we don't have the time to, to do now, but I'm gonna take, for example, this last, well, this question here in the middle. And um, I know I went in 10 seconds to this concept, but for example, imagine you have set up a DHIS2 system and your database on your server gets corrupted but you have backups. I'm giving you five, 10 seconds to think if you think that this means that it has an impact in confidentiality, that it has an impact on integrity, or it has an impact in availability. I give you five, 10 seconds. If uh, you want to open your mic, your mic microphone and talk, say it. If not, I will read the chat. I have one, one answer, integrity, someone else, all, five, four, three, two, one, go. So no, uh, thanks for participating in any case. In this case, our, um, well, our concept being impacted is availability. If you think about it, the confidentiality Exactly, it's availability of things. Uh, confidentiality is not because nobody accesses this database. Nobody has read the information. Integrity, this database, uh, nobody read on the confidentiality. Integrity, the database is still there because I have my backup. The problem is availability. The moment my database is corrupted, I cannot have uh, the HS to run in. So my impact is in availability. So I need probably to restore the server and this is gonna take one day, one week, whatever. In any case, this is a quiz that I'm putting you here. What I would like you to do 
I'm going to say this weekend because I don't want people to work in the weekend, but maybe next week when you review the slides, I'm giving you the answers at the end of the, of the session, but maybe you want to quickly uh, go through it and try to analyze. I think it's a good exercise in case you need to assess at one point uh, the HIS2 implementation. Again, this is not a course on security, but I think this principle, which is what we call the, the triad, the CIA, those, these three principles are the ones that uh, you need to think of when doing a, an assessment or implementing DHS2. My only thing for you to remember if you want to forget the 15 minutes I've been talking is that when you implement Android, please understand that it has a huge impact in the security perspective. Remember that, if you remember that concept, I'm happy. <clears throat> and this basically because what I was saying before, when people are working on the web, you have one laptop connecting to a server and you put all your efforts in your server, which uh, might be better efforts or, or, or worse efforts, but you put the efforts there. Because we are taking mobile phones and they're going out there and we said that the phones have all the information they have, they might have. Uh, this is exposed. If I lose my phone, someone could access my phone, etc. So we need to protect this data. So now I cannot put the efforts only in the server. I need to put also in these devices. And these devices, there are many different devices. Everyone has different phones with different requirements. So this makes it very complex. I'm saying here that we need to do this because we care about data security. It really depends on the project. Sometimes you will be collecting information that is very sensitive, but it's not because you care. Sometimes in different setups, you might be obliged by the law. In different countries, if you're collecting medical data, you need to ensure a level of security. And this is something that you need to check because I don't know, of course, the legislation of any country, to be honest. Basically, that's it. I'm going to quickly finish with this, that we are doing our part by following this uh, security framework that we call OWASP, and it has the impact on these things I'm putting here. Uh, that's the reason, basically, you cannot take sc screenshots with your, with your phone, because following this framework tells that we should not let people take screenshots so they cannot share sensitive information. There are other things here. I will not cover it because I don't have the time. But this is what we could do and we have done it. Now it's up to you to make sure you secure your implementation. And for this, there are things you can do on the phone, for example, by setting a pin code. And this is something we're giving you in the application. You can set up a pin code on the application, but you can also set it on your phone. I'm sure most of you have already a pattern or a fingerprint in case you have a phone that reads fingerprints, whatever. But we also provide you to do this within, within the application. And also you need to set up the server to make sure that this security level is increased. And for this, what you should do is grant always the minimal permissions and the minimal scope. Again, think that this device will go out on the wild. And if I have downloaded more data here, I'm uh, enlarging the scope of, or the attack vector, if we wanna talk with uh, security teams. That's it. Let's secure our implementation. I think I have one more slide. I'm going to go very quickly. Let's see. If, yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, sorry. So as you see, the, the slide that is coming afterwards is the one with the solution to the test. If at one point you want to go through the test, please go. I think it's a nice activity too. But let's secure our implementation. Let me stop sharing and I will start sharing now the, the one with the exercise. One second, please. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Just the few. Screen. Are, you, are you seeing questions on Slack? There is one. Uh, if you have no. time, it is about 
Could you please explain again about integrity, security, and availability? I don't know if you okay. have time, maybe, yeah. I'm gonna go through the exercise and then I will answer that question, okay? Um, because it says it's very quickly explained. And then I will I will answer that question. So in this exercise, I, I was telling you, let's secure our implementation. I think that's the last thing. My last sentence was, uh, oh no, no, don't look at the screen. Okay, let's secure our implementation. What I'd like you to do now is to make sure you can put in practice these concepts I was talking about. And basically, this is the heading of the of the exercise. After the whole week working with Android uh, and setting your server, I'm telling you that we have reached the finish, the end of the campaign, and you have been all assigned a user that we call ST001 or zero whatever. So this user is not longer going to collect COVID data. It's not going to go out there to collect patients, uh, but you still need to do some work with this device. So these phones are still need to, they still need to be able to see the patients you enter, but you don't want to let the user create more patients. So for this, you need to do two things. Well, and, and we this we consider that this phone, this scenario is going out there on the wild and you are scared that people can lose their phones and then someone could access the phone and read these patients with COVID that they have been registered for. So what I'm asking you in this uh, scenario, uh, fictional scenario, is to secure your implementation. And by this, what we would like you to do is to convert this Android user that you have been using the whole week into a read only. So this person can only uh, read the data and sometimes this is called a manager or an access in some implementations that I have been uh, working with. And also I want you to put a pin code on the application. It's very easy to do this task, but I think it will allow you to go through this concept. Again. Here is the example, what you have to do. If you see on the left side of my, of my screen in this one, if this uh, uh, screenshot I took from my phone, you can see that I create test. Here, you can see I have clicked here and you cannot sit down there, but I have my, my keyboard and I could type. While on the right one, I cannot, it's a read only. And this, you see the fields are a bit like grayed out. So what I'm asking you is to convert, to pass from the left side to the right side. And for this, you need to change your same settings on your program, like as I'm putting here. The exercise. Uh, and also you need to limit the scope that I'm putting here. So there are four things you need to send. So a document with four screenshots. The first one is, and this is something that some of you already did on the first day, some people did not do, but we want to make sure you assign the user to only that organization unit, that you send an image with your new sharing settings. So I see that on the server, you have set it up properly. On the other hand, I want another screenshot of your Android device where I have, so you perform here some changes in the server, the device retrieves the new with a metadata sync. So you will see that it becomes gray. And the last screenshot you have to provide is uh, a screenshot with the pin code on your application, not on the phone, but using the details to capability of certain pin code. That's the exercise. I'm gonna be here for the next minutes. I'm gonna answer now the question you asked. And um, well, that's it. I think it's easy. If you have doubts about the exercise, let me know. If, um, well, I, I will keep recording until the end of the, uh, for four, more, four minutes. So let me go back here. I don't know who asked, thanks for the, que thanks for the question. Um, about the confidentiality, integrity, integrity, and availability. I know I went through them very quickly, but basically, when we talk about data security, most of the books, most of the information we will we will find, they refer to data security with what is called the triad of data security, which is CIA. 
Some people add another fourth thing, which is called non-repudiation, but we will not uh, talk about it. Basically, these are three concepts that have been discussed and have been decided that are the main pillars of data security. And we have confidentiality, integrity, 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 fuck, in, integrity, integrity, wow, integrity, integrity <laughs> and availability. With each of these concepts, we look at the problem of data security from different lenses or different points of view. The first one is confidentiality. And confidentiality, I'm going to read the concept here, is that the information needs to be accessible by only that, then by only those that the information was design, designated to. Rephrasing it means that I want something to be confidential in this domain of data security. I'm, about, I'm talking usually about data, IT data, so patients' data, or uh, yeah patients data if I talk to you, students data if we talk about the education domain. And I want this information to be only accessible by those that the information was designed to. So imagine I'm registering patients. I want only the specific doctor to be able to read the information about this patient. That is what we call confidentiality. If I tell someone a secret, I am the person creating this information and I'm sharing only with another person. I'm trying, well, I'm talking here about confidentiality. I have a secret and I share with this person. That's confidentiality. The second concept is integrity. And is that this information needs to be authentic, real. It needs to reach the person or the agent that the information was designated to the same way that it was created. So I'm going back to the medical uh, example. I have registered a patient and I say, okay, a patient came with COVID today. He's a male, 32 years old, uh, has AIDS and has had surgery in the last two years. I'm putting, I'm compiling this information. I'm keeping it safe, secret, confidentiality. But when I go back to this information, I want this information to be the same. I want this information to say, this was a patient, male, 32 years old, uh, with AIDS, etc. If when I read this information, it says it's a female, 18 years old, uh, never had surgery, my integrity of the information is broken. So someone has changed this information. So that's the integrity. So I need to make sure that the information remains the same when I move it from one place to another one, or when I transfer, or when I when time passes. If I go back now to the example of the secret, if I'm telling someone a secret and I'm saying, I am gonna drink two beers tonight, I want this in person to receive this information. So I don't want him to understand that I'm gonna drink two teas tonight. I said two beers, that's integrity, okay? The information remains the same within time. And the last part is availability. And availability means that this information needs to be accessible when I want it, when I need it. Medical example, this doctor goes now to his or her files, open the filer, takes this thing. It says, we said we we're talking about a patient, male, 32 years old with AIDS and surgery in the last two years, I think I said. The information is there, that means availability. If when I open my drawer, my filer, the information is not there, I have broken the concept of availability. Imagine that this paper has been destroyed. So confidentiality still could be because nobody read it, hopefully. Integrity is authentic. Nobody changed, so I'm not reading wrong information, but the information is not there. This file is not there. If I go back now to the stupid example of me going out tonight and having two beers, if I'm putting a note here for, my, for the person living with me and this paper flies away because there's wind in my house, the person that the message was supposed to be intended to, to be cannot read it because the information is not there. Those are a bit the concepts. If I'm already over time, just for to mention that the last one is called non-repudiation. Ah, sorry, I'm reading something. Uh, and non-repudiation, it's another concept that some people consider and means that if I create information for someone and this person 
said he received it. Later on, they cannot say, I did not receive it. That is what called, that's what's called non-repudiation. But the main ones, the ones that everyone agrees on is CIA, confidentiality, integrity, availability. So with these concepts, I quickly explain, you could go to this quiz and say, okay, um, if my DHIS2 server is down due to a network or electrical issue, which, concept, which of the three concepts is impacted? So this is the exercise I want you to do. This is not in the exam, this is for you in case you find data security amazing and you want to invest some time. I think there are some questions that you could uh, think of. That's it, I'm a bit over time. I hope I answered the question of whoever asked. Thank you for, for asking. I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna stop recording.